Hey guys, I'm Lucas, welcome to KNews episode 27, covering the upcoming SpaceX Falcon 9 launch. The rocket will be brought to the launch site using a so-called hype train. It is fueled with excitement, thus environmentally friendly. Such a train is rarely seen, but the noise can be often heard throughout the world. The Falcon 9 was upgraded from its previous version with cooler fuel to increase the fuel density and increase the rocket performance. Slight changes were also made to the upper stage, but I'm not entirely sure what exactly. One thing I can tell for sure is the reaction control thrusters, which steer the booster stage after separation, move downward slightly, which might indicate the upper stage needs more room behind the shroud, but that's just a guess. The launch will take place in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and the rocket will head for a roughly 52 degrees inclined orbit, similar to the ISS, just slightly higher and also in a different plane. After main engine cutoff and second stage separation, the booster will rotate itself and point back to the launch site. It will ignite three of its engines to reverse its trajectory, aiming at the launch pad. This seems like it takes a lot of fuel, but the booster is almost empty, thus very light compared to its initial mass. Once on the right track, the booster will rotate again and prepare itself to re-enter into the atmosphere. Meanwhile, the upper stage goes on with its mission and the ferrying separation exposes the payload to the vacuum of space. 11 Orbcom satellites, which belong to the Orbcom Generation 2 constellation. These are communication satellites in a low Earth orbit, which decreases the latency of the signals compared to satellites in a geostationary orbit for example. Latency is the time it takes for the signal to travel a certain distance, and although it travels with the speed of light, very high orbits have a huge impact. The speed of light is kept at almost 300,000 km per second in vacuum, so a signal from a satellite at geostationary altitudes of roughly 35,000 km takes 116 milliseconds to travel one distance, and it has to travel at least two. Added to that is the time it takes for the satellite and ground station to process the signal. However, there are of course applications where latency doesn't really matter, but in some cases it can be quite annoying, for example in multiplayer online gaming. Once in the correct orbit, a little below the aimed satellite positions, the upper stage will release the satellites one by one, almost half an hour apart. They will then find and hold their individual spots at 750 km altitude on their own, using their built-in thrusters. Long before that happens, the Falcon 9 booster from earlier will have re-entered back into the atmosphere and hopefully ignited a single Merlin engine just a few hundred meters above the ground. The side-mounted wings will help to control the rocket, because using only a single engine makes controlling rotations very difficult. If everything goes according to plan, the booster will touch down smoothly and SpaceX will be given a really nice Christmas present. However, this can of course only happen if the Federal Aviation Administration gives green light for a landing attempt on land, just an hour or so before launch. I'm not entirely sure, but SpaceX will probably keep a floating barge in the ocean again as a backup plan so to speak. Ok, I will of course follow the launch live and I hope you will have the chance to do so as well. That was KNews episode 27 and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.